Okay, so I've been sent this CMA CY55 trail cam uh, to have a little review of. So we're going to open her up, see what's in the box, uh, play with all the settings, and then we'll set it up outside and see what, what sort of results we get. If you're a regular viewer to my channel, you'll know I've done a couple of these before. So this is going to be interesting to see how this one goes. Let's see what we've got in the box. Obligatory instructions. Great big thick thing because it's probably in about a million languages. See what we've got in here. Strap for attaching it to a tree. Uh, a swivel uh, mounting which I use quite a lot. I just uh, tent peg that to the ground, keep it down low. And a patch lead, USB, so you can download straight to your computer. Let's have a look at the bit of kit itself. And straight out the box, feels quite nice. Looks fairly well made compared with all the others that uh, I've tried. Feels nice. Finish looks good. Yeah, you've got your USB port and uh, DC in at the bottom there. And your standard quarter uh, tripod thread. Battery storage or battery uh, housing in there. You've got eight double A's in there. They say use lithium ions or alkalines but they don't say anything about rechargeables but most of these cameras say don't use rechargeables for some reason. Let's see what we got in here. Looks quite nice. You got uh, all your buttons up the side there. Menu, up, down, OK and mode. Your on, off and test switch down the bottom there. And your PIR, that's there, it's got clear covering over it. Your um, infrareds, which they say are no glow, but that'll be to be determined. Cover over the screen there. Might as well take the other one off the PIR while I'm at it. Winkle that one off. good positive catches. It's waterproof, not submerged waterproof, but uh, if it rains it's not going to, to worry it. Got LEDs there that one tells you when it's running and the other tells you when it's capturing. Uh, so let's get some batteries in it and see what happens. Right, I've got a 32 uh, gig SD card and some batteries, none of which come with it. You have to supply your own. Um, so let's see if we can figure out how to put the batteries in. It just says install the batteries in the manual. It doesn't say which way. Now there is pluses and minuses written on both the lid flap and on the casing just inside. So it says plus. Do you put plus down or is it going to be plus up? So I don't really know. Obviously they alternate two one way to the other see what happens. So that's put them that way and then actually no that's wrong because on the lid there it says minus and it's actually a positive, it's going down onto a positive so I think it's got to go the other way around. So that isn't made very clear so be careful about that. Just making sure we've got positive there, positive there so when it's shut positive so yeah so that's got to be positive up. Let's see. Put them in and see what happens. Now, I've even forgotten now which way around I put them now. All right, so see what happens. Again, good positive um, locking mechanism. I'll stick the SD card in. I reckon they'll only. It'll only take up to 32 gig, um, and they say recommend use a 10 class or, or greater. This is um, SanDisk Pro Extreme, I think. So that is the one I use in all my cameras. So let's.
turn the camera around and see if we can fiddle about with the settings. So I'll stick her on and see what happens. Put it in test mode. And the first thing it's asking is language, which it's already set to um, English. So I want to press OK. So now it's asking me to set date and time. I don't know why it's doing that because that's not the first one on the menu, but we'll do it anyway. Can't remember what the date is. It's the 27th of the 11th, 21. There's a bit fiddly with these little buttons with my big fat fingers, but they work quite positively. Quite a nice um, click when you push them down. But I do hate that beeping noise. I severely hope there's a setting to get rid of that beep. Do not like that. That was uh, f asked me to format the card, which I decided to do because it's been used in my other camera. And now it's filming me, so I'm guessing that's all done. So we're back to the mode setting. And that gives you um, either photo, video, or both. So you can have, have both. So that's there, photo, video, or both. So I've got gone for, photo, uh, for video. Then you've got uh, photo resolution. Goes from two megapixels right up to 16 megapixels. That's that one. So we'll set that at the highest, at 16. Then the next setting is a photo series, which is basically one, two, or three photos uh, at a time. So it'll be like a, a one or a burst of two or three. Um, then we've got the video resolution, which goes from 640, 1280, or 1920. So I'm going to set that again up to the highest resolution. And we've got, uh, what else have we got? Video length. Um, again, it goes from five seconds to five minutes. I'm going to set that to five seconds. Uh, no, to ten seconds. I like uh, mine at about ten second videos. Because quite often by that time, your subject has walked out of shot. Then we've got your cycle storage overwrite. So I think that means. Uh, or cycle storage, I think that means whether it overwrites when it's full. You can either have that yes or no. Then you've got the PIR interval. Again, that's from 5 seconds to 60 minutes, um, depending on your circumstances. I should again set that to 5 seconds. Then you've got the PIR sensitivity, um, which is high, medium or low. Uh, that again depends on uh, temperatures basically. If it's really cold, you set it um, high. If it's really hot, you set it low, or vice versa. I can't remember. I'm just going to leave it in the middle. Um, target recording time. Well, that means basically you can ha either set it to record during the day or during the night or any time you like between two sets, two two times. So you can set that to. Uh, if you only want it at night or day or certain times of the day. Then you've also got time lapse, which goes from 15 seconds to 30 minutes. So if you just wanted to do a, a time lapse of some plants or a field growing or a tree growing or something or other, you've got that option. Then we go back to language again and then time and date and then serial number. Um, then you've got your temperature units. You can have centigrade or Fahrenheit. Um, I've left it at uh, Fahrenheit, I think. And we finally get down towards... Um, which one are we on now? I'm not sure which one we're on now. I can't think which one that is. But eventually we get down to one that will turn off the blooming sound, that beep sound at last. And we've got audio recording on or off, the timestamp, 
which will give you time, date and logo, time and date or just date or completely off. And you've got password and format and that's about it. So what we're going to do now is just set up the this base and then we'll stick it outside and I'm, what I'm going to try and do is put it put my Bushnell, I've got a Bushnell tra um, trail cam I've got the screws there if you want to screw that to a tree but I say I just um, pin it down with some tent pegs onto the, the ground um, yeah I'm going to put it up next right next to my Bushnell and then hopefully we'll be able to compare um, the footage from both that's the theory Half the settings on these these cameras you don't really need, but it's nice that you've got the options there if you do need them. Now this is just a standard quarter inch 20, I think it is, uh, camera mount. Let me just stick it on there. And so I'm going to go and put that outside. We've got some foxes that regularly come into the garden. I'm going to leave it out for a couple of days because we've got foxes and squirrels and all sorts. And then we'll come back and see how it looks. This is the view from my CCTV. Forward. There we go, into range. You can see the infrared there quite clearly. So it's actually working quite well. So that's what uh, my cameras see. Unfortunately, about 11 o'clock, I don't know when it started, uh, the camera decided to mist up. Not quite sure why. Stills and video. It's not uncommon. I have had it happen before on other trail cams, but it's a bit of a nuisance. But uh, later on in the evening, it clears itself. This is the start of the clip that my CCTV caught. This is it here. So it's pretty good. Um, later on in the evening or early morning, a not so glamorous specimen turned up. Looks like a pretty old fox, this one. But you can see it's pretty good, not bad at all. And during the day, the quality is, is uh, as you'd expect with a 1080p, pretty good. The stills aren't bad either. I'm quite impressed with it. So for under £50, I think it's a very good entry level um, trail cam. And it's the sort of thing you could leave out because it's not horrendously expensive. You could leave it out somewhere where there would be the risk of it being stolen because you're not. it's not a huge amount to lose. Not like some of the more expensive top end ones. Even managed to capture the wife doing a bit of gardening. So yes, yeah, so I give it a thumbs up. That's pretty good. And here's a few specs. And we'll catch you on the next one.